I'm a 19-year-old female, and at the time of this story, I lived in the worst part of downtown Portland, right behind the projects. I know I shouldn't have been riding the bus late at night, but there are some circumstances that just can't be helped. One Friday night in April, my boyfriend was hosting his birthday celebration with a big group of friends. I work on Saturday, Sunday and Monday, so I had been a bit annoyed about his choice of timing, but I understood that it was the most convenient for everyone else, so it's all he could do. Since I worked early the next morning, this meant that I had to ride the bus home late at night. The ride home was about 40 minutes. I had never really been bothered much on the bus before, and always felt comfortable out at odd hours of the night. That night, however, it felt different. Around the time I started heading home, I got this terrible foreboding feeling. I armed myself with my pocket knife and started the journey home, well past 11pm. The bus ride began entirely normal, but the feeling never really subsided. I was very aware of everything happening around me, and soon I decided to text my roommate to see if he could be in the area at the time I was due downtown, as he finished work around then. Soon, I got a reply that he had been relieved early from work, but was turning around to wait at my bus stop. And boy, am I still glad I made the decision to text him, as it may have saved my ass. But one stop before I was due to get off the bus, this obese guy with green hair and a pit bull gets on the bus. I didn't see him notice me or anything, so I went about minding my own business. The stop at which he gets on was only about two blocks away from mine. I got to my stop and was greeted by my roommate, and here's where it gets creepy. The guy that had just gotten on the bus gets off at the stop also. As my roommate and I start walking home, this guy starts trying to keep pace with us and gets way too close to me. My roommate and I are fast walking on the edge of a wide sidewalk, so it's very obvious that this guy is trying to get close to me for some reason. My roommate notices as well and we fall silent. We manage to outpace him and turn a sharp corner. I look back to the guy and give him a what the fuck kind of look. But at that moment, I notice that he had stopped where we turned and is now taking pictures of me with his flash on. This is the dead of night on a sidewalk with some crusty office buildings. Nothing worth taking pictures of. Well, needless to say, it scares me that if I never followed my instincts and contacted my roommate... Things might have turned out a lot worse. So, you'll need quite a bit of backstory in order to understand what my mentality was like at this time, and why I allowed myself to be in this situation for as long as I was. I'll try to keep it as brief and need to know as I possibly can. For reference, I'm currently a 20-year-old male, but this story began when I was 14 and a freshman in high school. Throughout almost my entire middle school years, I was severely bullied, to a point where I suffered from severe depression, a social anxiety, and self-esteem was so low that it was probably a negative number. I had literally no friends I hung out with outside of school and I couldn't seem to go a single day without someone saying and or doing something to me. I had absolutely no idea how to stand up for myself properly, nor did I know how to establish boundaries for myself as I felt like I deserved to be treated like garbage. I would bend over backwards to please everyone around me with no regard for myself whatsoever. I was so starved for friends and positive attention that I would latch onto anyone who was even remotely nice to me, whether they were actually genuine or not. I still kind of suffer from these problems today from time to time, albeit nowhere nearly as severe as they used to be. After I graduated middle school, I moved to a completely different area of the city where I was able to start completely fresh and leave the past behind me. I had hoped my freshman year of high school would bring me the happiness I had yearned for for so long, but unfortunately, it didn't. My problems continued to get worse as I still struggled to make friends and was still constantly being bullied. At that point, I didn't care who I was friends with, I just wanted to have some. This mentality is what caused this whole situation in the first place. 
that the bullying was at its worst during my gym class that year. I was being bullied by numerous people in the class and I never could catch a break. Eventually, I found a group of people to talk to in that class that actually seemed to like me. I never hung out with them much outside of school, but they were pretty chill people, and I enjoyed talking to them during class. During the second half of my freshman year, a few new students made their way into my gym class. One of them quickly became acquainted with my group, which is how I became acquainted with him. For the purposes of this story, I'll refer to him as M. Now, M gave off an extremely creepy vibe from the moment I met him, but I largely ignored it as I was just happy to have someone to be friendly towards me. We managed to relate to one another pretty well, considering that both of us were constantly bullied and had virtually no friends to speak of. We eventually exchanged numbers and our friendship began. I was so grateful at the time to meet someone who I could be myself around without worrying about being ridiculed for doing so. I still want to punch myself in the face for ignoring the creepy vibe he gave off, as I would find out pretty soon why he did in the first place. Everything was going perfectly fine for about two months into our friendship, until we had a conversation that set the creepiness in motion. I forgot how exactly it got brought up, but at some point, he revealed to me that he felt like he was bisexual, as he had feelings for both girls and boys and was worried about people bullying him for it. I told him that there's nothing wrong with being bisexual and that he should be honest with himself. If some people are going to give him shit because of it, then they're the kind of people you probably don't want to associate yourself with anyway. He was pretty happy that I didn't shun him for what he told me and said that I was the best friend he had in the school. There was silence for a few seconds and then he asked me, So, uh... Do you have feelings for guys too? I responded by saying no, that I didn't. I've only ever been attracted to girls. He seemed visibly disappointed by my answer and said, Oh, okay, just wondering. We talked about something else afterwards and the rest of the class went on as usual. Now, I just want to make it clear that I am not homophobic by any means and a person's sexual orientation is their business and I have nothing against it. I knew right there that he was hinting that he had feelings for me, and I have had gay guys hit on me in the past, but unlike other times, this was the only time where I actually felt creeped out. About two weeks later, the stalking started. I lived about a 15-20 to 20 minute walk from school, and I lived in an apartment that was located right next to the train station. Em's last class was located a few classrooms away from my last class, so we often would bump into each other on our way out of the building. And normally, he took the bus home that was located right on the street in front of our school, but one day he told me he was going to take the train from now on, and asked if I would walk with him since I lived right there. I did find it strange that he all of a sudden changed his route home with no explanation, but I was happy to oblige. We walked to the train station and parted ways. I walked into my apartment and put my bag in my room. I went into the living room to watch some TV and looked outside my window to see M standing at the top of the station stairs just staring up at my apartment with a creepy ass smile. I was extremely uncomfortable and laid on the couch for a few minutes. I went back to check if he was still there and thankfully he was gone. The next day, I asked him why the hell he was staring at my house and smiling at me, to which he responded that he wasn't staring at my house and that I was crazy for thinking that he would do something like that to me. He gaslighted me and I fell for it. I dropped the issue after that. He started popping up more often in school. I would see him more frequently in between classes and he would often walk me to my class, even though it would make him late for his own classes. One day, I didn't bump into him on my way out of school. Shortly before I got home, he texted me, asking me where I was and that he was waiting for me in front of the school. I told him that I walked home and he texted me back saying that he was upset that I didn't wait for him after school to walk home. I apologized and felt pretty shitty afterward as I felt like I was being a terrible friend. The next day, when I left class, he was waiting right next to the classroom door for me and would continue to do this whenever he had the chance to leave class early. 
he began liking and commenting on every single post and picture I had on Facebook. He got annoyed at me one day when he asked me why I didn't respond to his comments on my posts and I told him that I didn't have time to reply to every single one. He even followed me into the store one day when I had to pick up my milk. He apparently saw me while waiting on the station platform and wanted to say hi to me. One day when we were walking to the train station, he asked me if he could come and hang out with me at my place for a bit. My depression was really bad that day and I just wanted to be alone for a while until my dad got back home from work and picking up my sister from school. I made an excuse that I had to leave in a bit anyway, so maybe next time. He got angry and stormed off and I didn't hear anything from him for that whole weekend. I saw him in class on Monday and he acted like nothing happened. And on top of all of this, our conversations turned creepy extremely often. At one time, he told me that he wished he could see the sexy body I had underneath my clothes and he laughed. I laughed awkwardly, hoping that it was just a really bad joke. He continued to make sexual comments towards me and even other people we knew. He even went as far as to slap my ass when I was leaving for my next class one day. When I asked what the hell he did that for, he said that it's just for fun, dude. We're friends. You can do it to me too if you like. I walked away feeling pretty disgusted. Well, the year ended shortly afterward and M fell off the face of the earth. He never texted me and whenever I texted him, I got no answer. He was never active on Facebook during the summer as well, so I couldn't message him on there. I wish I could say that I never heard from him again, but that didn't happen. The first day of sophomore year rolls around, and once I reach my math class, I see that M is in the same class as me. He gets extremely excited, and to be honest, I did too. I'm not sure why, but I didn't ask why I hadn't heard from him all summer. Everything was fine for about a month too, and his creepy antics largely subsided, but then shit started up again. He never bothered to do his math homework and kept asking me to copy off of mine. I was nice and allowed him to do so, thinking that it wouldn't continue all year. He continued for about a month though, and I was starting to get annoyed. One day, I told him I was getting tired of him copying my homework and not to bother doing it. He claimed he was too dumb to do the homework and that he would fail the class if I didn't help him. I told him that this would be the last time that I'd let him copy my homework and that he needed to start doing it on his own. He started going on about how I didn't care about him anymore and asked how I could just let him fail a class. I told him that I didn't want him to fail but he needed to learn how to do the work on his own. He looked like he had something else to say but then class officially started. He started to text me more sporadically, and his mood changed with each text. Sometimes, he would simply say, hey, what's up, and our conversation would go by fine. One time, he texted me saying that I looked like crap that day, and that I should care more about how I look. Obviously, I didn't respond. Other times, he would text me asking why I was ignoring him, and that when he texted me, he deserved an answer. The worst text he sent to me was one where he told me that he didn't understand why I didn't want him to come with me to pick up my sister from school, and he even called me a pedophile. I told him that he was sick if that's what he actually thought. I ended up making a friend in my history class. She and I became best friends, and I started hanging out with her and her group of friends very often. I told them one day, and he warned me that they were bitches and that I shouldn't trust them. I told him that they didn't seem like that to me, and he told me to wait as their true colors would show soon, and I would admit that he was right. Once I began making more positive friendships, I realized just how messed up my friendship with M was. They even told me numerous times that they thought that he was a creep and didn't understand why I hung out with him. Eventually, I had enough of his manipulative bullshit and general creepiness and slowly begun cutting contact with him. Now, I got a new phone with a new number, and I never bothered to give him my new number. Now, this worked for about a month until he somehow got a hold of my new phone number, and texted me one day while I was walking to pick up my sister from school. 
I can't remember word for word what he said, but I'll try to paraphrase as best as I can. He texted me something like, So you find a new group of friends and you couldn't be bothered to keep your old ones. You're such an asshole as always. I've been there for you since day one and you couldn't even tell me when you changed your number. I thought you were different, but apparently not. You're the same as everyone in this school, blah blah blah. I officially stopped being nice to him at this point. I texted him back saying that he creeped me out and that I was tired of him constantly making me feel bad about myself. I told him that I was also tired of him constantly hitting on me and making sexual remarks towards me when he knew damn well that I didn't like him like that. I told him that I knew that he was stalking me and that he needed to leave me alone. He never texted me back after that and I blocked his number later that day. He didn't speak to me at school and Luckily, I rarely saw him outside of our math class. I really had hoped that that was the end of it. But of course, it wasn't. It was one o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, and I was in my room playing Left for Dead with my friends, and I was the only one awake in the house. I get a text from a random number that said, I'm here. I texted the person saying that they had the wrong number, and the number calls me, and I answer. Uh, hello? No, I don't have the wrong number. Get outside. I want to talk to you. I'm across the street. Holy crap. It was him. I was absolutely livid, and I responded by saying, What? You're at my house, dude? Go away. I told you to leave me alone, man. He then said, Listen, I just want to talk to you. I want us to be best friends again. I told him I was calling the cops and he sounded extremely nervous on the phone and begged me not to do that. I picked up the landline and started dialing 911 when he finally screamed. Okay, okay, I'm leaving. And hung up. I heard someone running outside and I assumed that it was him running away from my house. I finally broke down and told my parents what had been going on. They told me to report him to the dean on Monday and that they would help me take care of this creep. I reported him to the dean and we had a hearing the next day. Em was told to stay away from me in school and never to attempt contact with me ever again. He broke down crying in the room, but honestly, I didn't care. He was placed on the other side of the room in our math class, and luckily, we never had a class together again after sophomore year. I managed to avoid him throughout the rest of high school, and I only ever saw him once outside of school. It was near the end of senior year, and I was meeting my friends at the food court in the mall to hang out, and I saw him walk by with a group of girls. He walked by and said, oh hi, like we were still best buds. I just shot him a dirty look and didn't say anything as I passed by. I still blame myself for everything that took place. I should have listened to my gut when it told me to stay away from him, and I should have told someone earlier about all the problems I was having, as things might have turned out differently. I was so desperate for a friend that I kept him around and let him run right over me, and I was so scared of being judged that I never told anyone about what was going on for such a long time. I know there were so many things I did wrong during that time in my life that I regret now, but it's all in the past, and luckily, I'm not the same person I was at that time. So Em, I haven't seen nor spoken to you in over three years, and I'd like that number to continue increasing for both of our sakes. The following story occurred in June of 2017. For some context, I live in a fairly major city bordering a great lake, and I live pretty much right on the coast, about three or so blocks inland of the lake. I live in a small one-bedroom apartment with my girlfriend of five years, Julia, and our two goofy-ass cats. We both work full-time and she makes chocolate, and for now, I'm delivery driving. We spend our idle hours playing video games together and making snacks in our cozy little window in the skyline. And neither of us earns much, but we do well enough to get by most of the time and take each other on the occasional night out for drinks, dinner, movies, and all of the above. 
About two weeks before this story's events occurred, I had just lost a relatively high paying job as a writer in a suburb town. It was my first real job out of college. Anyway, on my first few days with no work to go to, I made a habit out of driving down to a nice spot on the lake. It was just a circular parking lot, nothing special, but it brought you close enough to the lake where you could see it without getting out of the car. It was just a tranquil place to hang out and spend some time. That day, I had gone there specifically to look at the lake and watch some James Comey hearings on my phone while occasionally switching to the Indeed app to send out some resumes. After I had been there for about an hour, I decided that it was probably time to head home. As I backed out of the circular parking lot, I felt the sudden irrepressible urge to look behind me. When I did, I saw a light blue late model Hyundai pull in and the driver was staring intensely at me. I looked away, assuming that it was just an awkward moment, as these things usually are. When I looked again though, he was still locked on me. I exited the parking lot, thinking that he'd only just pulled in and was thus unlikely to immediately leave. I glanced into my rearview mirror as I drove away from the parking lot, and just as I was about to turn a corner, I saw that light blue Hyundai pull out and follow in my direction. Again, I brushed it off though. Certainly, it must have been a coincidence. Maybe he got to the lot and there were too many people there for his liking. What do I know, right? I decided that, just to be safe though, I would take a few odd turns on my way home just to ensure that he wasn't following me. There are two main roads in my town that are parallel to one another, with small residential streets bracing them. I took a path on these main roads and down the side streets that nobody could have simply mimicked by chance. But after every turn, I would look back, and there he was. A right turn, look in the rearview mirror, there he is. Left turn, take a look, and he's there again. My heart flutters a little as I start to realize that something may actually be going on here. Now, I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'11", 165 pounds, soaking wet. I'm not a pushover and I'd be prepared to defend myself, but I'd be lying if I said that I wouldn't avoid that outcome at all costs if I could help it. Bravado is a stupid reason to get killed. After he had followed me for far too long, I was totally fed up and decided to do something to decisively determine what the hell was happening. I decided I'd pull into a gas station and up to a pump with a clear path in front of me, uh, that way, he would have to follow me in there, or piss off. You know, I was hoping for the latter option, but I had no such luck. I pulled up to the pump, leaving my car in drive, just in case I had to peel out of there. He pulls in behind me and up to the adjacent pump. His windows were tinted, so I couldn't see inside. He'd had them down at the parking lot when I saw him staring. I begrudgingly lowered my window, and he did the same revealing his old, sunken face. He couldn't have been too much older than 50 or 55, but this guy's face was sort of all messed up. I felt a primal, negative reaction to him immediately. It was powerful and it stifled me. Seconds later, I managed to find my voice. Can I help you with something? I half shouted. You think I didn't notice you following me? What do you want? His face grows angry and red before he simply says, No, you're not her. He speeds away, tires screeching. At this point, I'm more confused than I was before, and I'm angrier than before. I decided to call the police to report the incident. The dispatcher directed me to the parking authorities. The officer asked if I would be willing to meet him down at the parking lot where the incident began to give a statement. And of course, I obliged. I drove directly there with new confidence. Even if the prick followed me back here, the cops are meeting me there. So problem solved, right? I thought to myself. I pulled into the parking lot and picked a spot in direct line of sight of the entrance so that the officer could easily spot me when he arrived. I was flipping through my phone to kill some idle time while I waited for the officer when I glanced up from my phone and wouldn't you know it, that same light blue Hyundai was pulling into the lot. I couldn't believe it. Still, I remained unafraid, 
He did a circle around the lot and exited directly. It was as if he was just sweeping the area or something. Maybe he was looking for somebody. Finally, the officer showed up a few minutes later. I gave him the rundown of what had happened and then told him that he had just been in the lot. 30 seconds later, the guy pulls into the lot again. I point the car out to the officer and impulsively shouted, that's him, before I remember who I was talking to. The officer gave me a look of surprise and flagged the car down and directed it to pull into a parking spot and to turn the car off. He spent about 10 minutes talking to the guy and when he walked back over, he informed me that the man had said that I was doing something creepy and he wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to hurt anybody. I have to admit to chuckling a little bit at the accusation. The officer reassured me though. They knew of this guy, but he didn't say what for. All he said was that the man was shaking and asking to apologize by the time the officer escorted him home. The man was told that he was not welcome back in the park due to his past behavior and his following me all over town. I felt justice was applied and drove home happily, albeit indirectly. That night, my girlfriend and I were sitting on our third story balcony, smoking cigarettes and sipping on beers around 2am. We were just talking and enjoying being home, together, with no chores or obligations on our backs. The stress of my unemployment was momentarily dulled to a whisper in the back of my mind at the time. But then we saw it. That light blue Hyundai, or at least what I thought was the light blue Hyundai, was idling on the street. It was two houses down from our apartment building, and we were certainly visible. Of course, I had already told Julia about what had happened that day, in detail. So when I put my finger to my lips and subtly gestured toward the idling car in the street, she understood immediately what was happening. I think that's the same car, I said. I can't be certain, but it's definitely the same make and model. It was too dark to make out the exact color. The shade of the light blue could have easily been confused with white at night time. I had written his license plate number in the notes though, in my phone, and squinted to try to make the plate out from a distance. I could tell that the first two digits and the last matched, and that was enough for me. I called the police and explained the entire situation. As I'm talking to the dispatcher, the car pulls away slowly. The dispatcher tells me that there are officers nearby and they'll come and inspect the area. I tell her that the car pulled off, but she reassured me that there were units very nearby and they would look for him. They never found the car and I triple checked my locks that night and nothing else abnormal occurred. After a few weeks had passed, Julia and I had all but forgotten about that odd and somewhat scary encounter. We both had a sweet tooth late one night and decided to just hit the gas station on the corner for some crappy snacks and Gatorade. I needed gas anyway. Julia drove to the station and I went into the store to get the goodies. As I was walking out of the store towards Julia and the car, I look over and that ugly blue Hyundai pulled up and that man is staring Julia down. Well, I stare directly at him and he meets my gaze. I just stared and stared at him. I wanted to know that I saw him. I get to the car quickly and corral Julia inside. I lock the doors and explain what's going on. We're both pretty freaked out at this point, but doing our best to stay composed. We pull out and drive randomly under the assumption we're being followed. We dial the cops again and they send out more cars to look. Nothing came of it and we haven't seen the guy since. The only information we learned was that the park rangers knew of him, because apparently he had been caught following women around the trails of the park, particularly women with headphones on who were walking or jogging alone. Something my girlfriend likes to do. His debacle with me was the last straw, and that is why he's banned from the park apparently. So, my impression is that he had seen Julia driving my car around town, as she often does, and saw what she looked like. Having associated her with my car, it would explain why he followed me, hoping that it may have been her. It's impossible, to be sure, I guess, but it makes sense. The last I heard is that the police told us that they would keep us posted if anything came up, but 
just told us to call if we see him near us again. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks again to the Hive members that bravely shared their stories for us all here, and I hope you guys are all doing really well. For the chance to have your story feature in a video, you can send your story to my email, which is in the description below. If you would like more scary stories too, you can click on the card at the top right of your screen or on one of the annotations on your screen right now. As always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates throughout the week. And also, if you would like content early and completely advert-free for as little as a dollar a month, uh, feel free to click on the link to my Patreon account and sign up there for regular MP3 format stories. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and for all the love as always, guys. And I'll see you mates in the next one.